What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That mask that mask kinda hurt. That mask kinda hurt. Sorry, sorry, that probably was loud, but hey, you know, sometimes I be wanting to do Batman reacts, but I'm up, I'm wired, and we here back in Australia, all Aussie adventure with Russell Coits. Coits, I believe that's how you pronounce that. I may be wrong. I may be wrong here, but we finna check this out because I went live and everybody kept recommending it. And I, I was excited. You know, I had some other video. I had like two or three other Australian videos playing. But I said, I got to check out these two. So I got this one and the the Aussie, the Outback Ringer. I believe that's what it's called. But we finna check them both out today. So got this first. So if you're watching this first, I'm doing another video just in the next two hours. But let's see. These some episodes. Very interesting. I didn't watch it yet. I didn't watch it yet. I'm reacting now, but I was just looking, reading through. I said, "Got to check it out." Look very old, but let's jump into it. Hit that subscribe button. Let's see. Oof. G'day, I'm Russell Coit, and this Coit. is my backyard, the Aussie Outback. Tonight we're heading up north to the Red Centre to catch up with some old mates for their annual cattle muster. Oh, dang. So what are we waiting for? Let's get cracking. Oh, snap. For Aussie Adventure. Come on, girl. So a horse wouldn't go. A bit of raw, this white brown land. Seen a thing or two. From great out back. I hope this don't get copyrighted and strike. All Aussie Adventures. Pack up your swag. Let's go. All Aussie Adventures. All Aussie Adventures. Time to hit the road. Let's hit the road. The Red Centre of Australia. A land as old as time and almost. Mm. Oh my gosh. Quality was so bad back then. My eyes are hurting watching this. Already. It's just timeless. If you ask me, it's a top part of the world. And what better way to <laughs> check it out than flat chat? Then what? <laughs> a couple You're of flying. old needed a favor. But I helped them out on their annual cattle muster. Problem was, it would mean covering 800 miles in just a couple of days. Dang. When it comes to lending a hand to a man on the land, an outback bloke like me just can't say no. The trip would take it me was through some for a minute. special country. Tell you what, sure is hot. Sure is hot. <laughs> very, very hot indeed. We're just heading up it in the It very Simpson dry Desert. out there. One of the biggest and driest deserts in the world. After that, it's the Alice. Alice Springs. It's still a couple of days drive away, but uh, there's only one thing for it. That's to keep on moving. My journey would take me north into oh my Northern Australia, then over the border into the south of the Northern Territory, and further west, just northeast, the southeastern border of Western hey, Australia. Hey, traveler. It's little wonder this country took so. This look like where Wally Coyote and uh, the the thing that go beep beep. This look like where they were. So long to explore and settle. Just about every expedition was defeated by huge distances, fierce heat, and of course, lack of food. What the early European explorers and pioneers didn't realize is that in the Australian outback, there's plenty of food to be found. Mm. You just have to know where to find it. Someone who knows more about bush tucker than anyone I know is an old mate of mine by the name of Greg Stewart. Let's go meet him now. The, hold on, the truck. <laughs> Greg um, Stewart. G'day, Greg. Hey, yeah. Yeah, good to see you again, mate. How mm -hmm. are you? Mm -hmm. Mate, uh, we're looking for a bit of bush tucker. You know, uh, a lot bush of people, you know, they look out there and they think to themselves, just normal old bushland. But to blokes like you, it's an absolute supermarket of food out there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You reckon we could uh, go out and have a bit of a look around for some bush tucker? Okay, yep. Uh, just before we go, mate, uh, I'm on a seafood diet. Oh. <laughs> if, I, if I see food, I, I eat it. <laughs> right. Oh, no, that's funny. Seafood diet. 
I don't think I ever right. heard that I one. See food, I, I eat it. Right. Finding bush tucker is not always easy, and it takes a skilled guide like Stewie to recognize the telltale signs that something edible is nearby. Nah. Aboriginal people have an uncanny ability to spot food. Where you or I might be staring at blank landscape, their eyes can spot life-saving bush tucker. What is bush tucker? Here, Brent, isn't it? What is bush tucker? Here. No, I can't eat that. No? No. Even though it was proving a little <laughs> difficult to find our dinner, what about, what it was a marvellous opportunity to see some very special we country. Do something with that. No. Maybe we could boil it up or something, make it into a stew yeah. or, or a tea. No? <laughs> no. Okay. The reality is, Greg, that this whole area is uh, you know, absolutely teeming with bush tucker. What sort of things would we find around here? Uh, wild onions. Wild onions? Oh. Yeah. Well, any, would there be any onions around here now? No, we've had a bit, bit of a rain. Won't find any now. Won't find any now. Yeah, uh, okay. Wild bananas. Bananas. Wild yeah. bananas? Oh, what, uh, what little sort of... Uh, Green, little, yeah. Little, little benefit, bananas. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of those around here, is there? Yeah. Any at the moment? No, they no. come some... Uh, just about summertime. Summertime, yeah. I well, mean, it's so dry out there. What's finna grow? What could we uh, find, like, today, actually? Now? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> Eddie. Nothing at all, my guy. Nothing at all. Time to hit the rock. <laughs> it was the tail end of the wet, and there was still a lot of water lying around. During the wet, a lot of tracks up this way get washed Damn. out. The only way to get around is to avoid travelling. But it would take more than a few puddles to stop a country kid from getting to a mate's muscle. Dang. Of course, with all that water, the fish were bound to be on the bite. It's amazing what you'll catch in these freshwater billabongs. Perch, yellow belly. Looks oh, like we've got ourselves got a bit something. of a snag here, though. Might even catch ourselves blackfish for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dang. Time to hit the road. Not that you find too many roads in this part of the world. I well, like Chuck Norris still right there. a few there. days south of Alice, smack in the middle of the Simpson Desert. Lucky thing I knew of you should cut the journey a little shorter. Oh, but about 200 clicks south of Alice, I stumbled across a bloke in need of some help. Just out of nowhere, right? It amazes me the people who think they can tackle the outback without the right vehicle or equipment. Hey, mate. This bike was going <laughs> nowhere fast. Bogged. Oh up my god. Lucky yeah, I always come prepared. This is a power jack or bullback. It's in the designed world? for use in soft desert sand where a conventional jack would just dig in and fall over. I ain't never seen one of these. A few diesel fumes and this bike should be on his way. Wow. I think that's enough. Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, Ozzy, it been. <laughs> he was just chilly while the, the thing was inflated even more. Hey, well down there. It's worse than the tire popping now. Off we go. All Aussie adventures. Oh my god. We'll be back with commercial break. Dawn. And as the first rays of dawn began to dawn, the Aussie bush comes dawn, along. Again, the dawn. Brightly colored parrots. The magnificent brown sparrow. And the majestic bullet. What is that? But the animals weren't the only things waking up. <laughs> no world. Just because you're out in the bush doesn't mean you can't enjoy some of the creature comforts. What we got here is a bush shower. Now I filled it up with warm water. It's simply just a matter of turning that and I get a beautiful warm wow. shower. Okay. Just drop the towel and we're ready to go. <laughs> they finna oh wait, they finna flag my <laughs> you two finna flag me for this. What are you doing? But enough of the creature comforts. Wow. It was time for this coit to get me. You two finna flag me However, for this. The car a few moments later, what are you it doing, Russell? Wasn't exactly alone. It's amazing what happens when you park your car out in the outback. You get little visitors. Is that a porcupine? Look at this. 
That's an echidna. echidna. What's happened is he's gone for a bit of a walk, found the car here and thought to himself, that's some very nice shade. He probably thinks I'm a big scary animal now because he can hear me talking and he's digging himself in nice and deep. Now these quills here are very sharp, so there's no They're way, sharp. even if I wanted to, I could get at him. A fascinating animal, animal, certainly beautiful as well. And you know what else I like? You don't have to buy a ticket to a zoo to see an animal in its natural habitat. And the great thing is, there's plenty more up ahead. Oh, oh. Time to hit the road. I had a muster to help out with days <laughs> to get there. Tell you what, the mornings can be cold oh up this way. Yes. Once the sun comes up, it doesn't take long for the mercury in. to do the same. Come up. The first white fella to make it into these parts came through in 1862. A bloke by the name of John McDool Stewart. He was attempting to cross Ooh. the country from south to north. In his path, huge tracts of desert, massive sand dunes, and dense, impenetrable spinifex. Spinifex. To make matters worse, not far into the journey, Stewart's party ran into a fierce tribe of local Aborigines. The battle was bloody. And by the time Stewart escaped, his party was dead. Dang. He was forced to stagger on, lost, out of food, totally alone. Of course, long before white man came through wow. here, the place was inhabited by black man. Not a black man. <laughs> What is that sound? What you're looking at here in the sandstone are the Ewaninga rock carvings. Ewaninga rock carvings. <laughs> and they've been here for between 1,000 and 5,000 years. Nice. It's a long time. Beautiful, aren't they? That's very long. I never pass through this country without paying a visit to my Aboriginal mates, where I'm often asked to help out with a corroborate. The oh, Aboriginal legends surrounding the outback are fascinating to hear, and I'm always fascinated <laughs> no to hear. Ted, can you ask Jeff to tell us a bit about the history of the local area? Yeah, <laughs> like, what did they say? What are they talking about? Yeah. Yep. What did he say? 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 What What did he say? Better get moving. I don't normally like sealed roads, but if I was going to make that muster, I'd have to get back on the bitumen. <laughs> this is the Stewart Highway, which stretches 2,708 kilometres from the south of Australia to the north, Dang. and then back again. Those cows on the side of the road told me one thing. I was getting closer to my destination. Yep, it was cattle country, and they oh, breed them big up this way, and that's noble. But seriously, these stock belong to an old mate of mine by the name of Sal Hearn, who owns one of the top beef cattle properties in the territory. There's no way I could go past without dropping in for a cuppa. G'day mate, how are you? Yeah, good thanks mate. Good to see you again. <laughs> you well? Yeah. What are you doing? That's wild, that's funny. Yeah, good He's shaking, uh, oh, were they black? The other people? Yeah, how are things going out here? He shake their head and it looks like it's screened up. I'll tell you what, the uh, road's a bit bumpy, more bumps than a paddock full of camels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it's terrible at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, good. Oh. Tea, tea. Oh, would you like a cup of tea, mate? Oh, that'd be lovely. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Oh, great. Yeah, Come on great. in. Oh, my God, this is hilarious. It was good catching up with Sal for a yarn. Well, I certainly needed that. Yeah, it's, it's good. good. <laughs> he made plenty of stops already. Toyota. A lot of country up this way is privately owned. But if you do the right thing and ask permission to cross their land, you'll find Aussies rarely say no. Did he tell them no?
lot of people find outback driving dull. The reality is, it's a top part of the world. And to keep your eyes open, you can see... Oh! <laughs> what in the world? Oh. Oh. Why can't I just hit a whole cow? At least you can have some burgers and steaks. Time to hit the road. They look like Chuck Norris. From a dis, maybe it's the pixels. I don't know. It looked like Chuck Norris. No. Dawn and I was on the road again, heading north through the Simpson on my way to that cattle muster. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that deserts are barren places, but there's plenty of wildlife to be found out here if you know where to look. Birds. Birds of a Wild feather camels. flock together. And of course, ants. That's what that is. But enough sightseeing. By now, I only had 18 hours left, and as each hour passed, there was one less. No doubt about it, deserts can be dangerous. My guy been traveling this whole episode. Made mistakes <laughs> out here and paid the ultimate penalty. Others have actually done. Oh man. But even with years of experience like me, things can still go wrong. Yep, it's finally happened. We're broken down. The outback certainly takes its toll on these vehicles. This is a <laughs> classic survival situation. Do the wrong thing and you'll probably perish. Do the right thing and you'll probably survive. Step one, do not leave the vehicle. People often make that mistake and they perish within <laughs> a couple of days. Remember, the vehicle is the safest place to be. Step two is to let someone oh know where goodness. you are. Now I'm gonna to go to channel five, the emergency channel, and tell the Royal Flying Doctor Service my location. Uh, this is all Aussie Traveller requesting emergency contact. Do you read, over? Kevin, is that you? Uh, negative, this is all Aussie Traveller requesting emergency contact. Who is that? <laughs> Me! Who's that other guy? <laughs> On the off chance you can't get through to the Royal Flying oh Doctor Service, God. you can still let someone know your location. In a survival situation, it's good to know how to make a signal fire. Put yourself in top of a hill, just like this one. Make a like small something crackling fire. right now. And get yourself some green leaves like these because they're good for making smoke. Then get yourself something like a lid, like an esky lid like this one. Pop the leaves on there. Where he get that We're going to use the international signal of SOS, which is three short, three long, three short. Take your lid, pop it over there like that. So this will be dot. Oh, shoot. <laughs> From here on. The that scared me. <laughs> this will be dot. <laughs> From here on, the survival is in. That kind of scared me a little bit. Get it wrong, and you could die. Step three is one of the most important of all. You know, in my 15 years of outback experience, I've learned some pretty important tips, and probably the most important is water. I never go into the outback without a decent supply of water. And the general rule for how much you'll need is three liters per day per person per man per degree over 25 degrees celsius per my guy yeah, got the whole calculations down in the winter months dividing it by two plus <laughs> another liter at the end but if you don't have water believe it or not you can create some okay what i've done here is an old bushy trick i've dug a hole placed some foliage in it and some plastic over the top what's going to happen the foliage will heat up and the water will be drawn out of that it will condensate on the plastic and run down into the billy that i've placed dang that i will place underneath <laughs> here like the oh my god there you go so just a matter of eat a bit eat a bit the main nice and taut and you'll have some water. And it's probably yep. took him a minute to set up too. You know There's no doubt in this climate, water is important. But so too oh, is- You can tell he needs some water because his mind ain't there right Ooh, now. The sun sure is hot. That sun Just do something to your mind, over for there. sure. Pop down here in the shade. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, bush tucker, you'd be wrong. These are bush poison. They're called lacation nuts. And if you eat one of these, you'll get very, very sick indeed. That's the funny thing about the outback. You make one mistake, and you can be in real trouble. <laughs> Time to search for some. Is he supposed to touch that if it's poisonous? Funny. It's not until you actually get out on foot that you realise what a vast place the oh, of Australia really this is. This is the middle of nowhere. And this plane stretching as far as the eye can see. And with binoculars, 
even further. But I wasn't the only one out here. Above, a magnificent wedge-tailed eagle soared majestically. Not the eagle. While down below, some magnificent ants toiled tirelessly. Them ants look pretty big. All right, it's hard to see them. They look pretty One big on this quality. very well in the outback is the rabbit. Now, he may be a problem for the farmers, but he could save you in a survival situation. If you haven't got a rabbit what trap, what rabbit? you might want to try is one of these. I always carry some twine with me. What you do is you just make it into a bit of a, a noose and you place that over the rabbit hole. Rabbit comes out and gets caught in the noose. Oh. Of course, you'll still need to secure that in. Just bang it in with the hammer. Oh, don't oh. hit your hand, Russell. And there you have Oh, well, we've got oh our food and water. God. Time to get back to camp. Just oh because you don't God. have matches doesn't mean you can't get a fire going. Man, do they even still put those in cars? With a little help from the car cigarette lighter and some kindling ready to burn, anyone can get a blaze going without a problem. So there you have it. Oh my God, I'm going to make some fire. rabbit stew. Oh. Wait, get some water or something. Not the car finna be on fire. I had all, can't do none of those things. Dang. <laughs> oh my god. It had been a long day. This guy is hilarious. It. Food, water, fire. The basics for bush survival. And with the billy on the boil, I was looking forward to it. Yeah, dang. Oh, one final tip. This is a bit of an old bushy strip. guy eating flying steaks. Yeah. To a decent meal. Oh, oh, 20 flies on that steak. This is a bit of an old bushy trick. I've put all my food into a bag and I'm tying it up on a tree and pulling it up so during the night the dingoes won't get it. <laughs> That's nice and safe. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, this is everything of what not to do. <laughs> oh my god. This is everything not to do, it seems like. Well, it's been quite a trip, hasn't it? We've seen some pretty special places and met some a whole pretty lot. special people. That muster is still a few days away, but I've got a feeling we're going to get there on time. But you're going to have to tune in next week when we hit the road for another all Aussie adventure. Good night. Oh my gosh. Day, no! I'm next good. Week on all this Aussie is it. If luck was a person, if bad luck was a person, we look for some more bush tucker. What about that? What could I eat that? What's that? Stick. <laughs> I couldn't eat it. <laughs> Meet up with some more genuine yeah. Aussie characters. Fantastic stories about, you know, the way things are, the way they used to be, that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what would they be? What, what would the stories be? Just one story. And learn another thing or two about bush survival. Oh, oh, that's coming up on All Aussie Adventure. Oh, my gosh. Bro, this seems like, my God, this is a bad luck was a person. At this point, <laughs> this is everything that could possibly go wrong in the outback in Australia. But no, this was this was this was good. This was good. Oh my, the pixels! You know, I can tell this is very old just by the pixels because my eyes, the blurriness. You know, hopefully it don't hurt your eyes as well. But hopefully it don't get blocked. But no, I'm definitely gonna have to check out episode two because my guy different. This is based on the book Beers, Bauer, and Blokes. <laughs> my guy, author, he does it all. He done wrote and directed and did everything for this show. So, but I appreciate you guys for sending me this recommendation, man. But y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, send more recommendations, and y'all be blessed. Be the best and be you. I'm out.